Okay guys, so today we're going to talk about history. Yay! So what kind of history are we going to talk about? Well, what's the one that we least learn about in all types of... everywhere in school and books? Well, chickens, obviously. Some good chicken. But seriously guys, we're not talking about chickens. How about something more like dinosaurs? That was an actual dinosaur attack. Okay, I captured him. Here, here he is. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Something more recent, like past few hundred years. Come on guys, the discovery of chicken bones. Dinosaur bones, I mean. Dinosaurs, chicken, the same thing. So dinosaur bones were first discovered by the Chinese during the Jin Dynasty. Um, we're thought to be dragon bones. I gotta make sure a dragon doesn't attack me now. But anyway, Chinese villagers used to dig up these bones from the earth and use them in medical practices. And today in China, people still do this. They go out and look for dragon bones. They're really dinosaur bones, but they still call it dragon bones. And then they use that to go and make their medicine. Hey there, you guys have Chinese food, right? Do you guys have any dragon bones? Oh no? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, okay, bye, 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 bye. But Chinese people weren't the only ones that mistake these bones for something else. In Europe, the people that found these dinosaur fossils thought they were remains of giants. It's a giant! Okay, let's get rid of the past now and move a little bit more to the present. The first time dinosaur bones came to be recognized was during the 17th century in England. It was one of the bones from the Megalosaurus. After being found in Oxfordshire, England, it was then sent to that man that you just saw, Robert Plott, who was a professor in chemistry at the University of Oxford. He was Christian, so after looking at the size of the bone, since it was so big, he thought it was a bone from a giant, like they said that existed in the Bible, those gigantic humans. However, then in 1699, there was a man named Edward Louis, who was actually a friend of Isaac Newton. And he was actually the first person to say that this isn't a giant's bone, like everybody thought it was in Europe. He was able to recognize that this belonged to some other creature, and he called this creature a sauropod tooth rectalum implanticum. Yeah, sauropod tooth rectalium implanticum. Now we go on to the 1800s. Okay, so now we have a guy named William Buckland. Now this guy was an amazing professor of geology at Oxford University as well. He collected the rest of the bones for the Megalosaurus dinosaur. And then he published them in this scientific journal. Wait, this isn't a scientific... Where's my... Oh my god. Anyways, let's move on to the second dinosaur discovered now. Now, this dinosaur was actually discovered by a woman. <gasps> yep, that's right, a woman. And her name was Mary Ann Mantell. She called this creature an iguanodon. Now, this woman was actually married to a man. Then there was a man named Judon Mantell. He was a geologist that actually noticed that these two creatures were kind of similar with each other, and then he went on and published his findings in a book. Finally, we're getting closer to the term dinosaurs being made. Now it's 1842. Yes. By this time, there was another dinosaur that already been found, named the Haliosaurus, and a, a man named Richard Owen found that these, all these three creatures were so similar they had to be of the same group of animals so we finally made up the term dinosaurs so then a man named Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg Gotha who was actually the husband of Queen Victoria came and ate and believed that Owen was right 
about all of this and helped them out a little bit. Together they were able to establish a natural history museum in London where they displayed all of these fossils and bones that they have discovered so far. Now the people finding these things weren't all just like study, 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 work, work, work. They had fun too. So in 1854, a man named Benjamin Hawkins, he, in England, made these life-size, big, gigantic dinosaur models. And he actually used them in a party, I guess, a party that he had in 1854. Richard Owens was invited to this party, which took place in London, England. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they had fun. It wasn't all work, work, work. Wait, what am I doing in the dark? It's the mid-1800s now. We should have electricity now. Yes, now we can see! And you can see a lot of my house. So bye-bye electricity. Then a dinosaur named the Hydrosaurus was found in New Jersey, and this sparked a whole wave of dinosaur f discoveries and explorations in the United States for many years after this. two people you just saw were Edward Cope and Othniel Marsh. Now they had this huge rivalry between each other because now what started in the United States was the Bone Wars and which was a race between everybody to who can get the most fossils and create the most dinosaurs. And they were pretty big enemies of this. Now this battle between the two people lasted around 30 years and ended pretty sadly. In 1897, after Cope spent his entire fortune on this dinosaur hunt, he died. So in the end, Marsh won. And all the research and discovery the two done was for absolutely nothing. This was because like many of the bones they found ended up being damaged or destroyed because since they were having a race with each other and they wanted to get these bones quickly, they didn't do things the proper way and be delicate with because there are findings like instead of digging, they would use dynamite to blow up the earth and then get the bones, which obviously would damage a lot of the bones in some way. So in the end, Marsh discovered a total of 86 new kinds of dinosaurs and Cope discovered a total of 56 different kinds of dinosaurs. 142 more dinosaurs, yay! Cope's findings are in the Natural History Museum in New York today, and Marsh's findings are in the Natural History Museum that's in Yale University, because they have their own. So if you ever want to take a look at them, you can go there. After 1897, dinosaur bones were found everywhere, even in Antarctica. The best places to find dinosaur bones today are South America and China. China has a lot of them, actually, and especially these new feathered dinosaurs they're finding. So, they might think that birds are actually pretty closely related with dinosaurs. Maybe they even evolved from dinosaurs. But enough about me going on and on about dinosaurs, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting.